Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to review the last Fortnite experience, Fortnite Festival. I mean, I already reviewed LEGO Fortnite and Rocket Racing previously and the only one I need to do now is Fortnite Festival. So, without further ado, let's get into it shall we? For the gameplay. Fortnite Festival is a rhythm game developed by Harmonix for Fortnite, which contains two playlists, Main Stage and Jam Stage. On the Main Stage, participants can groove to jam tracks from a rotating selection or from their own collection, which they can obtain with V-Bucks in the item shop or unlock in the festival pass. If you're aiming for the highest score against friends or collaborating to ascend the leaderboards, players can immerse themselves in a dynamic musical experience. Upon entering the main stage, players find themselves backstage, where a variety of features await. Here, in the backstage ambience, a rift stands ready for exploration, an NPC offers latency calibration, and a central terminal provides access to the jam tracks on that rotation. This terminal facilitates track selection, difficulty adjustment, and instrument preference, allowing each participant to customize their own experience. As players ready themselves for the stage, they can anticipate a rhythmic journey filled with challenges, overdrive mechanics, and collaborative gameplay culminating in a festival of music delight. You can also customize your instruments by purchasing them with V-Bucks in the item shop, which come in a variety of themes. To my knowledge, the Shredder event did have Ninja Turtle themed instruments, with one instrument being themed after one of the four turtles. The gameplay in Fortnite Festival isn't terrible. I'm just the worst at rhythm games personally, apart from Beat Saber, that, that's an exception. For the seasons, even though I am late to my review of Fortnite Festival, two seasons have took place so far. Season 1 commenced on the 9th of December 2023, showcasing The weekend as the featured artist, offering a collection of 34 tracks. This season introduced the Festival Pass, spanning 11 tiers, each consisting of a thousand festival points per tier. Season 2 debuted on the, the 22nd of February 2024, but with Lady Gaga being the headlined artist this time. And like its predecessor, Season 2 maintained the Festival Pass structure, requiring players to earn Festival Points to unlock tiers. Fortnite Festival has a penchant of spotlighting signature artists, evident through the prominence of The Weeknd and Lady Gaga in their perspective seasons. And I do think they are going to get more artists to headline different seasons in the future. Moreover, Fortnite Festival has a diverse range of licensed music in either the Festival Pass or the item shop. Featuring artists like Fall Out Boy, Psy and Lady Gaga, while I'm personally into 80s music, the song choices are not awful. Since there are songs from chart toppers like Imagine Dragons, Olivia Rodrigo and Billie Eilish, does add to the dynamic ambience of Fortnite Festival. Although we do have a decent selection of tracks so far, there hasn't been one song that I really, really hate included in Fortnite Festival so far, as of this recording. For the summary, the gameplay, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. The gameplay isn't terrible, 
I'm just the worst at rhythm games apart from Beat Saber if I'm honest. But I do think Fortnite Festival has its potential to expand. The graphics and the performance, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I like the detail in Fortnite Festival, especially with the feature allowing you to customise your own instruments, which you can show off to people that you match make with. For the songs, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The songs provided in Fortnite Festival so far are not awful. I'm personally more into 80s music than chart hoppers, so I'm not too familiar with TikTok music that came out on the dawn of the pandemic. For the content, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Unfortunately, some of the content it offered is locked behind a paywall sadly, and although I am against the idea of Fortnite Festival having its own standalone battle pass, at least the one good thing to come out of it is that it's themed after a different artist each season. For the difficulty, I'm going to give it a moderate. I'm not the best at rhythm games personally, so some songs, if you don't remember that well, can be hard to master at times. And for the perk, I know this is an experience within Fortnite, but if it was an option to own it physically, I would give it the play then sell perk. Even though F LEGO Fortnite is my favourite of the three experiences introduced in Fortnite Chapter 5, Fortnite Festival is a decent rhythm game to dive into if you don't have a rhythm game available to you. And overall, I give Fortnite Festival a 7 out of 10. The Fortnite Festival offers an immersive musical experience within Fortnite, presenting players with two vibrant playlists and a variety of features to explore. With customizable instruments and a diverse selection of tracks spanning various genres and artists, the game caters to both solo players aiming for high scores and collaborative efforts to climb the leaderboards, while locked content behind paywalls and moderate difficulty level may pose challenges. The game's graphical detail and performance, coupled with its potential for expansion, make it a solid rhythm game option, particularly those seeking for a new rhythm game to play within Fortnite's epic expanding ecosystem. So guys, what do you think of my review for Fortnite Festival? I am going to do a year two review at the end of the year with LEGO Fortnite and Fortnite Festival because I, I was a bit late to the review compared to the rest. So hopefully a annual review will be coming out at the end of the year. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8 out.